It's exciting. Uh, I think there's a good blend of um, kind of young talent coming through um, that will definitely have um, high standards to, to meet. And then you have experienced guys who've been there when they ha it hasn't all gone our Ireland's way. Um, you know, someone asked me what was the expectation around Ireland, you know, what defined success for them. And I said, well, isn't it mad that now from a lot of people when they think of Irish rugby that if we don't win a Six Nations or win a World Cup, that that's failure. It's not that long ago. Um, I remember playing in those years where we won nothing um, and won nothing for a long, long time. And since 2009, we won four championships. Um, and so it's been reframed. Um, so I think if you're looking at this team in terms of what is success for them going forward, I think let's not judge too quickly. Um, this team is, has got to evolve. Or we can win championships, we know that. We haven't won a World Cup, so we, we have to think of how we plan for that, um, how we have genuine competition um, throughout the squad. Um, and you do that by evolving players and evolving the style. And, and I'm really excited to see how that unfolds. Do you think Andy Farrell has made the right choice regarding the captaincy? 100%, 100%. People may even say that he very unlikely to be around for the next World Cup, but you don't think that's an issue? I don't, like, I mean, it depends who you ask. You ask Johnny, he's, he's, he's saying he's going to be there. Um, he might be, he might not be. Um, I don't think that's important. I think uh, he, even let's think of the next two year cycle, right? Um, to the halfway point. Uh, look what England did actually last time they had Dylan Hartley as captain then you know 18 months out they changed it up um, so it's it's not uncommon for that to happen um, in previous times with Joe it wasn't uncommon for the captain not even to start games uh, he did that with Leo Cullen in, in Leinster days um, I think Johnny's pretty much been the captain for the last two years of the team really the leader of the team he's at the core of it uh, he's the 10 he's like the quarterback in the team he's pulling the strings um, and I think I, I, I think he's at a, at a place now in his career where he's more than capable of stepping up into the formal role. Does it give Andy a distinct advantage, the fact that he's already been part of the Ireland setup for a number of years? Yeah, we, I, was, I was talking to a lot of buddies about this, and um, it does because, you know, when he was, when Joe was the top coach and he was underneath, there's a very different uh, relationship and dynamic with the players. Um, and he will probably have to change that dynamic a little bit. Um, and relationship a little bit now that he's the, the top man making the call essentially on, on selection um, but he'll take those learnings that he soaked up in terms of the team dynamic the culture the actual energy of the group um, and just being around it and he's been around a lot of different squads you know he's been around uh, England squads Lions squads uh, now Ireland squads um, so he'll take all those learnings going forward uh, and it's, uh, you know I'm excited about it because he's one of those rare coaches that has actually done it as a player uh, in two codes, has been a leader from a young age. It's very rare that you actually get a coach that has done it at international level. Um, and that will bring a lot more even authentic, uh, authenticity to, to the players when they're listening to his messaging.